Hey friends, welcome back to a new Power BI video. Now let's dive in a certain specific case study which I had quite recently. Now the idea was that I have a folder and in my folder I have invoices. And what I wanted to do is to extract the total amount of these invoices. However, as you can see here, those invoices are PDF files. Which means, if I show it to you in the browser in here, they look like that. It's just a demo, a sample here, but the structure is the same. So there's quite a lot of information here, then who is it uh, who actually received the, the invoice and so on. And then there at the end, there's the total amount in here. Now, the point was, these are PDF files. And we all know that everyone in the world loves them and also hates them. Because most often it's difficult to extract the data especially if you want to have this in Excel, for instance, or in our case, in Power BI. So what to do? Now, what I thought was in Power BI, Power BI, we have the option to extract data from PDF, right? So if I go back to Power BI, and maybe let me close the browser for now. So let me just connect to get data. And there are various options. And under more, we know that we also find PDF. So there it is. However, if you choose this option, of course, you can only connect to one PDF file. Now, of course, you can do this if you have maybe two or three PDF files. But if you have a folder like me here with in total a thousand PDF files, and you want to extract the total amount from each of them, then of course, you don't want to do this manually. But I remembered that there's also an option from folder. Now, so far, I personally most often used it if I had either flat files or Excel files to do extraction from multiple files in one go. However, then I thought, why not trying from folder using PDF files? So I clicked on folder, go to connect, and then I need to specify the path. Now in my case, this is my path. I paste it inside, I click OK, and then just wait. And we see that the PDF files were recorded. And we only see a subsample, so we don't see all the 1000 files here. But obviously, Power BI recognized that there are files and also that the extension here is PDF. So far, so good. Now, what I did was I used combine, but not immediately because I don't want to have all the data. I only want to have the total sales numbers. So what I did was I went here and say I want to combine them. So create the function to extract the data, but also I want to go to the query editor. So I take this option and then I just wait until the editor opens. So it connects to the file and there are the pages. So depending on how your PDF files look like, Power BI recognizes several tables. And if you click on the table, you see a preview of the data. Now here I can see this is not what I need. But if I go to table number two in this case, I can see that there is a total column and there is the exact amount. This $1,725 in this case. And there's also this thank you for your business. Okay, so then I can select this one and I can click OK to select the table. And then we just wait until Power BI, or in this case, the query editor, does its magic. So just a second, and there it is. There is the query editor, and we see that we got information here like description and so on. And in my case, I have here a key, which is thank you for your business, as well as total here. And then I can see an amount in here. So I can easily just go in here and say I want to actually only want to keep the total rows. So I can tick this option, which makes sure that now for each of my invoices, I only get one row back. And this row contains the total amount. And you can see that currently it's not sorted correctly because it started with 1, 10, and so on. But believe me, in total, we have 1,000 invoices in here. So, so far, so good. Now, of course, we would like to probably do a little bit more of transformation here. So in my case, I probably don't need the description because it only tells me thank you for a business. And I also don't need the unit price because I can see these are nulls. So simply missing entries, there's nothing inside. So I can simply right click here and go to remove columns. 
So now I have only the source, then the total amount here, it's called simply total, and then the amount itself. Now, of course, I can also remove the total column because it only contains the total as a word, uh, but it's really up to, to us how we want to continue here. An important fact is that currently I can see that there's a little space in between the numbers. So this is why I could try going here and say, well, um, let's try it first from converting this to a decimal number and see whether that works. But obviously, as you can see here, it throws errors, at least for me. So I need to go back one step, and then I probably need to fix this first, this uh, missing, or actually the space in between, the one and the seven here. So I can easily do this by selecting the column first, and then I go to replace values. And there, I simply type in a space, which I want to find, and replace with nothing. So here, put in a space, this I'll leave empty. And I could go to the advanced options, but that's totally fine here. I can keep go with the default ones. I click OK. And you see that now, the, in this case, the space is gone. I can go to the remove columns one more time, so you can see the difference, hopefully, even though it's a little bit small. But here, it's with the space, and then replace value is without the space. And from here on, I can then go to ABC and try to convert it one more time into a decimal number or actually into a fixed decimal number. That would also work because it only has two um, decimal numbers. It's a, it's a dollar amount. So I click on here and you see that now we, in this case, format this correctly. So for me, on my local settings, a comma is uh, the separator for the decimal number. That's why I can see a comma in here. But really, it depends on uh, your, of course, your region. And then I'm actually good to go. And now I can go to close and apply, take this option. And as I said before, let the query editor do its magic, because now all the data from the 1000 images, or in this case, PDF files, not images, but is scraped. And only the, the total amount is kept. So depending on, of course, the system, and also the resources you have it might take a, lie, a little bit, so some kind of time, but we just need to wait and then we can actually uh, view the data and see it in Power BI. And we are good to go. And now if I go inside here, this R, I can see here an amount column and also source name and quantity in this case. And if I simply check whether I get the amount, I can tick this option here. Of course, I could also create a measure, but here's simply a quick check. Let's go inside click this option, and maybe use a card instead of a bar chart. And we can see that easily here, we get an unformatted, not really nice formatted amount, but that's actually, um, let me just go back. So let's actually go in here, and let's actually sort currency, and let's say two decimal numbers. And we can see we got 1.52, in this case, million as an amount. And that's it. And this allowed us to extract, in this case, uh, the total amount of sales we have across 1,000 uh, invoices from PDF files, which is, in this case, really nice, because otherwise it would have taken a lot of time to do this manually, definitely, right? Now, of course, you can also extract several additional data and information, depending on what kind of PDF you want to scrape. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So the, hopefully that was interesting to you and you learned something new. If you did, then I would highly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel to see more videos in the future and also if give the video a like. So that's it. Stay safe and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.